Want to pass the CIS exam? Then you're going to want to watch this full video. Hey sterile processing professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. In today's video, we're going to go back to the basics with inspection and testing of instruments. And if you want to get certified as a certified instrument specialist, then you're going to want to listen to everything we talk about. A lot of what we're going to discuss is actually going to be on your CIS exam. So it's really important that you know it. Consider this your free study guide. You're welcome. But if you want more assurance that you're gonna pass the CIS exam, then click that first link in the description and go check out the CIS practice exam materials. I perfectly designed these practice exams to help you pass. And if you wanna get 15% off your order, sign up for the newsletter. Okay, so what I'm gonna cover today is instrument design and also instrument inspection, which can include rusting, pitting, cracking, and staining. We'll cover troubleshooting tips and then also sharpness testing and the different ways that is achieved. But first, how are instruments even made? Well, instruments nowadays are made from different formulations of metal, depending on the company and the design of the instrument. You might have heard things like stainless steel grade 300 or stainless steel grade 400. Now, stainless steel is the outer layer of the instrument. Stainless steel is corrosion resistant. It withstands high temperatures and it's 100% recyclable. So essentially good for the environment when we have to recycle those old instruments. Now instruments are first born by liquid metal being forged and stamped. The liquid metal is actually put into a form, into a mold, and then there's some cooling procedures that must be done in certain fashions to ensure the integrity and the strength of the instrument. Next, an instrument undergoes what is called flashing, where you actually remove the really jagged and rough portions of the instrument through grinding. Next is finishing, which is all about smoothing the surfaces of the instrument. So this is making sure it's smooth, sleek, but also getting those edges down for like osteotomes or scissors where you're actually getting them down to a cutting area. And lastly is passivation. This is a very chemistry approach to metal hardening and corrosion resistance. The instrument is actually submerged into nitric acid, which helps to remove remnants of iron on the outer layer of the instrument that could lead to corrosion. And this ultimately forms the protective chromium layer of the instrument. Do you need to know how instruments are made in everyday operation? No, you don't. But when it comes to taking the CIS exam, you do. Now, hopefully your facility has some kind of ongoing contract with a instrument repair or sharpening service where they actually cycle through your trays so many times per year. And hopefully they're certified to do it. We don't want to be hiring just some guy in a white van down by the river. And I say that because I've seen it. We want people that understand how instruments are built and how they must be protected with the extra outer layer to ensure that they're not sharpening or modifying instruments in a way that is going to create corrosion, rust, and damage the instrument overall. Okay, let's get to inspection. You're assembling an instrument tray. What is it that you're looking for? Well, number one, you're looking for functionality. Does the instrument work properly? Does it actually ratchet into place like it's supposed to? Is it loose or wobbly? Is there screws that are loose that are coming out? Instruments need to perform as they were designed for surgery. If anything is wrong, you need to fix what you can and what you can't fix, it needs to go for repair or be disposed of, whatever your protocol is. Next, you should be looking for corrosion. Corrosion includes things like rust or pitting of the instrument. Pitting is those spots of tiny holes or divots in the outer layer of an instrument, which can be from corrosive exposure to certain chemicals or long-term exposure to things like normal saline, like maybe the OR techs are cleaning the instruments with normal saline or sending them down to normal saline, and that should not be happening. They should be in water. A lot of times you'll find pitting underneath like instrument identification tape. That's where a lot of chemicals or normal saline actually get trapped under the, the instrument tape and it sits there and it just erodes the instrument away. With rust, it means that the outer layer of the instrument has been compromised and that is 
actually oxidizing the metal of the instrument. Now rust is very important to take care of because it is well known that it can cause patient complications and infections. To identify rust, you can use either something to try to wipe it away or you can do an eraser to try to erase it away. Now, if the color wipes away, it was likely a stain. If it doesn't, then it's probably rust and you either need to send it for repair or dispose of it. Now, speaking of stains, let's get into stains. Stains aren't necessarily bad, but depending on the color of the stain, it can give you an idea of what is actually causing the stain to begin with. I have provided a link in the description down below to a user's guide from Cooper Surgical that talks about the different stains you may see on instruments. It also lets you know what the probable causes are for each of those stains. For example, if you have like multicolor stain, like a rainbow looking stain, then those are usually from excessive heat. Maybe your sterilizer or your automated washer is getting too hot overall, or maybe it's getting hot spots within the equipment itself. Or maybe this instrument's supposed to be sterilized at 250 degrees, and maybe you've been doing Prevac 270, which could be causing that, that change in the stain. Okay, so you've inspected the instruments. What's next? Now we need to check for sharpness. And these would include things like scissors, laparoscopic scissors, osteotomes, and like Ron Jors. This is where you need to have sharpness testing materials at your workstation. And no, they're not expensive, so that's not a valid excuse. All it takes is a tiny little bit of extra time per tray, and that's it. It's super simple. You can take these pieces of, of testing material and just have them actually attached to your workstation. And when you grab a scissor, you inspect it, you're doing your visual inspection, you can do a cut and that's it. That's all you have to do to test the sharpness is a simple cut. Now, depending on the size of the scissor, there is red material and there is yellow material. Now you don't have to test scissors every single time that you process a tray. If you have like an instrument tracking software where you can set up periodic alerts when it's processed so many times, that would be ideal because then whatever tech is processing the tray at that time can test it. If you don't have that, you're gonna have to be able to show that you're doing it or just do it for every tray. Now for the different types of rongeurs like pituitary, kerosene, single action, double action, there's different thickness of cards to test the actual cutting action of those rongeurs. And this is kind of like those three by five cards. It's that thicker paper kind of cutting. And that's also super easy. You grab the rongeur after you've inspected it, you click the card stock and you determine has it cut it or not. And lastly, let's talk about osteotomes. Osteotomes are checked for sharpness using what is called a dowel rod. It's a very simple test to hold the osteotome at a 45 degree angle, and you're just measuring whether it, the osteotome actually catches or if it slips. Now, sharpness testing is so simple. With the red material, yellow material, and the cardstock, you don't have to get a new one every time you're testing. If you hang it from your workstation, you can get so many cuts on that turn it to the next side and get so many cuts on that. It's super easy. Now here's a couple really important things you need to know for the CIS test because at least one or both of these are always on the test. The red cutting material is for scissors that are 4.5 inches or longer. The yellow test material is for like laparoscopic scissors or any other scissors that is four inches or smaller. For more information on sharpness testing, I have linked an article down below from Rick Schultz, who is known in the industry as the instrument whisperer. His article covers the different testing materials more in depth. Also, don't forget if you're studying for the CIS exam, I do have the CIS three pack that is specifically designed to help you pass and has helped hundreds of techs pass the CIS exam. Any topics or videos you wanna see, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments down below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I love you guys and I'll catch you in the next one.